Today we are going to be talking about themed collections, but not just themed collections, also themed backdrop. So today is July 25th and that means it is Christmas in July. So what we went ahead and did was decorate a Christmas tree with amazing palms, flamingos, all beach fun things to be engaging and exciting for the live sale. So our viewers will be so pumped and ready to shop. Also, what we did was we picked out themed pieces to go along with the backdrop. For example, some of these top selling fun items. This is one of our top sellers right now, so we make sure we're including that in our collections along with some sales because it is Christmas in July, so sales make sales. We wanna bring in some lower discount items and a little bit more price point so you're able to hit those goals for your live sale. Another example that don't be scared to bring in is some other categories. We have this trending bag. This is definitely designer inspired. So this is definitely trending right now and you can be adding and mixing categories. So it doesn't have to be just apparel. It can also be some really cute bags or accessories. Let's talk about how much time it is to prep and how many items you need for your live sale. So it really depends. We're going to talk about two scenarios. So one scenario is where you're going to be trying on all the samples and the other scenario is just going really fast through the items like a speed rack. So to prep for a general live sale, about an hour is 30 pieces. And beforehand, I like to make outfits and collections so the customer can feel good and just all the pieces and that's where you can upsell as well. So another way with the second scenario is to do a fast speed cap, recap I call it, with going through as many inventory pieces as you can. Sometimes I need a team member to help me because it's so fast that I'm not really organized. So I'm just quickly, quickly just showing the items with it being on the hanger and talking about it and moving very quickly. And that's where I also I'll have the team member talk about the sizing and the prices behind. So it's kind of just really quick, fast paced, money making discounts. That is the two ways of going live. So one thing you definitely need to do for a successful live sale is to have a promotion or what I like to call a gimmick. Either a buy three, get a BOGO, 40, 50% off, spend $100, receive this. That will help encourage not only the viewers to spend more, but to stay on the whole live session because they want to see what else you're going to be showing. So in the last video, we talked about tools that you must have for a successful live. And for me, it's definitely the barcode scanner. It just makes my lives super seamless. And especially with prepping for a live sale, I'm able to scan the item right into the collection to be able to go live. And it just goes right in there and then I will be ready in no time. That's it. When you start your live sale, you are going to want to introduce yourself. That is important. You have the first five seconds of your live video to catch someone's attention. So you do not want to sit there and say, I'll just wait for everyone to hop on. You want to be able to say your name. You want to say your boutique name. List all your socials, your Instagram, your Facebook, and your website, and maybe download your app. You want to do that in the first five seconds of hopping on live. When it comes to showcasing live for live selling, there are some general rules that you want to talk about when it comes to the item. So for example, when I go live, I like to bring the product up close and then far away. And also I'm going to be talking about sizing, the fabrics, the colors, anything pretty obvious and visible to your eye. I like to vocalize it so the viewer could tune in or maybe they're not paying attention but some certain words will catch their attention to draw them in to want to make them buy because it's not just about showing the product it's also about that personal connection and maybe there's something that you mentioned that wait I am going to a baby shower I can wear that there so you're helping educating them
them to want to purchase. Now, when trying on the product, I do showcase it first on the hanger, and then I would not wear this for a live sale. Normally, I would be wearing a brami, a cami, biker shorts, or leggings, so it's just very easy to stay on camera and change right then and there. But you definitely wanna make sure you are educated in knowing the styles. For example, this is a baby doll cami with a ruffle sleeve, thicker, so I'll hide your bra straps. So those are key words that maybe you wanna educate on knowing how to properly showcase the items to encourage sales. For demonstration purposes, I already took off my blazer, so we are going to do an example of trying on the top and how to properly sell it. So when I'm live, I will literally go like this and then put the item on. Sometimes it can be awkward putting an item on during the live, so I like to tell a funny story or just talk so it's not so awkward, so it's not just me struggling putting a top on. Another thing that is really important is you wanna talk about what size you are wearing and what size are you normally, because as your viewers start to grow on you, they're going to know, oh, that's tight on her, that means it would be too big on me, or et cetera, like reverse. So it's really important, so I'm a small, trying on a small, I will let them know how it fits. The other key feature is to kind of pretend you're taking photos in the camera, so it really highlights and showcases the pieces. So I normally go off to the side, I'll look back, I'll show them the back, I'll show them the little features that has buttons right here. I'll kind of ruffle it up and do fun moves. Now, your moves will be completely different, but you can definitely do some studies to see some photograph moves and what is flattering. So you don't want to just stand there like this. Like that's not gonna help sales. So you wanna be able to move with the product and flow and see where your good angles are to help embellish the top a little bit more. So that you can see that this top is big on me. So I just wanna make sure I am, oh, see, I'm wearing an XL. So I would have so been selling this as a small. So it's really important to make sure you know what size you're wearing. So this is an XL. So I can't say it, run, it runs big because it, it actually is true to size. Knowing your size chart is really, really important. I have it completely memorized. So if you wanna do that, definitely, I highly recommend that. So small is zero to six, medium eight to 10, large shell to 14, XL is going to be 16 to 18, 2X is gonna be 18 to 20, and 3X is gonna be 20 to 22. Now I have three size charts memorized, one for if a top runs small, one for a true to size, and one for an oversized look. So. We can try to include that for you guys so you can memorize it as well, but I've been doing this for seven years, so it, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. The key to keeping your engagement up during a live sale is really important. What I like to do is jot down some questions or some topics or some fun stories that has happened with me throughout the week or throughout the day that I wanna stay on topic about. So writing that down, keeping it off to the side to help you to constantly remind you about different topics or questions you can ask. You can even buy some fun games that have really good questions like about TV shows or things that are happening. You definitely wanna keep it uplifting, no downers during the live. So fun, engaging questions, stories. You can even have your stories continue going throughout the week with different lives to keep your audience wanting more about that story so you're not revealing the whole entire story or with, tune in till next time to find out who did what. So they're wanting to know what happened, I need to know. And they have, they're thinking about you and your boutique all week to, and they'll be there, they'll show up and they'll wanna buy something too. So keeping that on the side will definitely help keep your engagement up during your live sale. Now that we talked about merchandising, let's talk about things not to do. So over the past seven years, I definitely accumulated a nice list of things that I highly recommend not doing during a live. The first thing I would say is chewing gum. Chewing gum is a big no-no on live. It's distracting, it's annoying, people get aggravated. If you're looking to upset a lot of people, then chew gum on a live. The second thing I would say is not eating food. Generally speaking, it's just not a good look while you're eating food and you're yapping and you got food all over your clothes. It's just really not a good look. 
Now, if you're drinking water, that definitely is okay, especially in the beginning of the live if you're selling a tumbler or reapplying your lipstick after drinking water. Then you can sell that lipstick or sell the tumbler. That is what I call indirect selling. That is okay. Another topic is politics, cursing, um, anything that's controversial, you may really consider not doing. Uh, just really think about who your audience is and who you're trying to target. Another set of tips is that you don't want to ever get off camera. That is what I call dead air. If it's too long, it's just awkward and if someone's scrolling, they think nothing is going on there. If you have to get off screen, I do recommend having someone there with you that could entertain them or hop on and talk or recap some items so it's not so awkward of you getting off screen. Another tip is to never turn your back to the camera. I, honestly, it's weird even doing that now. I don't think I've ever done that. I usually will walk backwards on the side. Like I don't think I've ever really, that's just so weird even doing it. So do not turn your back to your camera. And the other thing too is if you have your host, like a side host or your friend there, you don't wanna just talk to them and never talking to the camera because that will also take away from the sale. So if you're talking, you wanna include your audience with it, unless you're planning a skit and that's a whole nother level. Usually I do plan some skits during my live that are totally off topic, just entertaining to keep people engaged if the lives can be a little boring, but definitely always including your audience into the live and looking straight at the camera. So you wanna look into the camera, not at yourself when you're on your phone. If you're looking at yourself, there is a difference between looking at yourself and looking into the camera because then that has that connection with your audience. Let's talk about how to properly end your live sale. So before you end the live, you do wanna thank your audience, thank your following for watching or tuning in and also to follow you on other social platforms. Also stress to them that they can watch the replay. I usually say hashtag replay. So if they are watching, you'll see a bunch of hashtag replays during the live or the after live. So you can gauge an idea of how many people are shopping the replay. Cause you don't think people are, but they are watching, just not at the time that you'd like them to. So encouraging them to follow you on different socials, hashtag replay, thanking them for being there and supporting your small business and then hitting end live. Thanks for tuning in and I would love for you to follow me and learn more at Katrina Demili. That's my tag for Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook.